Hello. Hopefully you can see me. I think this is going, 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 going. And live? Live. Yes, we are live. Hello, AS Gamage audience. <laughs> Hi, my friends, say hello to me if you are here. It's a little early, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this open while people are getting here, but hello, hello, hello. If you're just getting here, share with us. Um, there's gonna be two of us here. I haven't introduced him yet. I will shortly, but if you're here, Write in the comments if you have any fun beverage that you're drinking. I'm boring right now, so I'm just drinking water, but it's just because I have to be able to actually actively communicate right now. <laughs> but if you're tuning in and you have a beverage of your choice, share what you're drinking or what you're doing or what you're doing to stay sane right now. If you're watching anything, I'd love to hear all of those things um, on the comments right now while we're just waiting to get fully set up so share with me, share with me. I think things are happening. I'm pulling up. Hopefully you can see me. Say hello, you see me. I'm gonna just check one more thing. There's a little lag, but I'm here. Ooh, I'm eyeball deep in K-dramas on Netflix. Ooh, what K-dramas? I had a roommate in college that was so obsessed with K-dramas. I am trying to remember the ones we used to watch. Boys Before Flowers, that's what we used to watch when I was in college, yes. Freshman, no, sophomore year, sophomore-ish year. I love that, I love that. So if you're just tuning in, um, what I've asked so far is just for everyone to share what they're doing to stay sane, or if they're doing any, if they're drinking anything fun right now, if you're enjoying a delicious beverage of your choice, tell me, tell me, tell me what you're doing. I just want to know because maybe I can, I can also partake. <laughs> I know I've been watching a lot of things on Netflix, so I need recommendations. Crash landing on you. Ooh. I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to watch it. Okay. I think. So I'm seeing people tuning in. Wonderful. Okay. So let's get this thing started. My name is Taylor Machete, and I am the artistic director of Laughing Pig Theater and LPT for Youth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading comments. I'm going to introduce myself and then I'm coming back to this for sure. Um, I am the artistic director of Laughing Pig Theater and um, a teaching artist for ASU Gamage, the Molly Blank Fun ASU Gamage teaching artist program. I'm a teaching artist for them. That's a lot of words. Ooh, yes. Epsom salt baths hot for two hours. Two hours. That sounds like a long time. Is that a long time? Maybe not. I don't take, I really don't take enough baths. I should be taking more baths. Cheryl, I've been taking a lot of walks. Yes, us too. We've been doing lots of dog walks, um, at least daily, at least daily. Well, let's introduce, introduce, introduce my partner that's going to be working with me tonight. It's um, surprisingly my husband. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Stop it. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tony Machete. Um, I'm the uh, other person who will be participating in this today. I'm the executive director of Laughing Big Theater and another teaching artist uh, in the second cohort of the Molly Blank Fun ASU Gamage Teaching Artist Program. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be hanging out back here to be an example student with you guys. Yeah, and, and helping me teach some of these because um, it's always, improv is always easier with two people. So um, you can do it by yourself. These exercises that we're doing today, um, some of them you can do by yourself. Some of them you can maybe do over um, like some type of medium like Zoom or FaceTime with friends, depending on what you want to 
what you want to practice that we teach you today. Um, today is going to be um, an improv master class really focused on thinking on your feet. That is one of the biggest um, one of my favorite guideposts of improv, Laughing Pig Theater has, we have like a, a seven guidepost system that we use, and that's one of the really important topics that are part of um, what we think a good improviser should be doing. So really thinking on your feet, that's going to be our biggest focus. Um, we're also going to be doing some three-line scenes just starting off um, how you start an improv scene um, with some basic scene construction, but we're only gonna have like 30 minutes today, so we can't go too far deep. But to start us off, we're gonna play some word association games because they're my favorite, and I hope they end up being your favorite too. Um, this first one is just to kind of get us warmed up and really thinking, again, on our feet. Um, this game is called Electric Company. You can, um, Normally, you would play this in a circle, but I'm going to adapt it to a two-person system. So I'm going to say a word. Tony's going to say the first word that comes to his mind. First word. There's not any wrong words right now. It's really just kind of generation. We're doing as much content, generation content. It's digital now, so words are different. Um, <laughs> we're doing as much generation of words um, as possible. Nothing is wrong. There's no wrong answer. So I could say, ha! Low. And Tony would say his word, which was low this time, yeah. and then afterwards we'd both say it together. So, hot, hot low, low, and throw up our arms. Um, good. So, Tony, we're going to make it kind of like a tiny circle. Um, Tony's going to say a word, and then I'm going to say the first word that comes to my mind. Rabbit. Dog. Rabbit, Rabbit dog. dog. And then we're going to say them together. Again, see, these don't make sense together. So, first word that comes to your mind, start thinking really quick. That's the idea of this. Tomato. Plant. Tomato, Tomato plant. plant. Uh, regret. Sadness. Regret, regret sadness. sadness. COVID-19. Yep. COVID-19. COVID yep. Uh, fluorescence. Lights. Fluorescent lights. Glasses. Hat. Glasses hat. Uh, shade. Blue. Shade, shade blue. blue. Good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that here. So this is an exercise that you can do at the very beginning when you're trying to just get warmed up and really get your mind flowing. Um, I love this exercise just to get thinking, oh, aloha from Hawaii, hi, Joe. So fancy. I wish I was in Hawaii right now. Well, maybe not, I don't know. But I hope you're doing well. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so Electric Company is that game that we just played, really just to start getting the mind flowing and full of ideas. Next, we're gonna move on to Mind Mel. So it's taking the same format, that game we just played, but now our whole goal is to come up with the same word. Um, we're gonna start with two just random words, which actually, I, yes, exactly. That's where we stole it from. <laughs> Electric Company, yes. So that's, yeah, that's what it's based off of. Thank you. Um, and why don't we start off with two words from, from the viewers at home um, for our next game. So if you can send two just, Two words. Yeah. First two words that we see in the chat we're going to use to start this next game. So type them in now. Try to stump us. It's a little bit of a lag. So it's going to be like 30 seconds before we get it. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> One thing I, I like to note with the uh, last game that we played, the Electric Company game, is um, my favorite part of it is that no matter what you say, you all say it together at the end and throw your mm -hmm. hands up and stuff like that because... Uh, the, really, the the important part of it is that you're celebrating whatever it is, no matter what you say. So there yeah. really is no wrong answer. You're just embracing it. You're embracing it and yes anding it, which are two major words in improv yes. that I'm sure you've all heard of. So we're going to go with our first two words that we got, which were cactus and giraffe. So Tony and I have to use um, cactus and giraffe, and we both have to think of a word. This one is not as much about as thinking quickly but getting on the same page and getting in tune with your partner, you do want to be kind of quick with it. Um, so Tony and I are going to count to three, and then we're going to try to say a word at the same time that hopefully is um, hopefully is the same word. Sorry, I'm keeping up on the chat and getting distracted. <laughs> Drop a word. Uh, that's just helping us. <laughs> Thanks, Ariana. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got cactus and giraffe. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, shark. zoo, zoo and shark. Um, those were our two words. So then 
Um, you can play this in a circle like we've talked about, or you can play it together. So um, now our two new words are zoo and shark. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Zoo and shark. Yeah. Um, um, okay, ready? Uh, three, two, one. Claws. Danger. Ooh, claws in danger. Okay, so those are our two new words. Now, again, same thing, taking those words, trying to combine them and get on the same mind. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Claws and danger. Claws and danger. Danger claws. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Wolverine. Oh, it's <laughs> going danger zone. Zone and Wolverine. <laughs> okay. So let's do it one more time, yeah. and hopefully this time we can get the juices run and really get it. Um, okay, ready? Yeah. One, two, two three. Go three. Go <laughs> Australia. Oh, that's fine. But the goal is to at some point get onto the same page. But it's okay if it, it keeps going wrong because you're just really getting a feel for each other. Um, so that's the type of game that you can play at home and like over like the computer as well. Like that's something we want to try and, and target with these two is that that's an exercise that really just helps to pass the time. Like just trying to get the same same word as somebody else at the same time is something that you can do with people around you and the people you know across your computer as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love my meld is again one of my favorite games. So moving on. Um, so those are two basic warm up games. Um, we always try to get. Um, like an energy game and a game that really gets you thinking um, slash focused. So next we're going to move on to kind of um, a game that combines those two. So this game is called Five Things. Yes, yeah, so Five that? Things is literally just what it says. So if somebody comes up with a category of some sort uh, and you have to think of five things that fall within that category. So the categories can be something as simple as five things that uh, you have in your fridge right now. Or they can be a little bit more abstract and be like, five reasons why you haven't called your parents lately. Or, you know, just something like a totally out of the blue, like uh, five uh, creative uses for the color beige. Uh, so the idea is you're thinking of a category that's going to be a little bit of a challenge for the other person, and they're going to come up with five things that fall within that category. So we're going to do an example one right now. Um, while we're doing that, I would love to see another uh category come up in the comments. So yes. think about a category of some sort, just like the ones I listed there, something that you think we would not be able to come up with five examples for, and we'll do our best to come up with it. So, and I'll give um, Tony yeah. this one. Um, five things that you wouldn't expect to see at the library. All right. Um, <laughs> the Norwegian uh, serpent that swallows the world, Yggdrasil. Uh, that's one. Um, my uh, uh, collection of all four grandparents all together. A um, uh, uh, wasp that's native to the South American rainforest. Um, a DVD of Cool Runnings. Um, and uh, a half eaten panini from Quiznos. I don't know if I should be offended by the Cool Runnings because I love that movie so much. I know, but it's never there. It's always oh, checked out. I guess, okay, that's fair. <laughs> oh, ooh, yes, we got lots of these. So, Five things to do in quarantine was our first one. All right, oh, so no. Taylor will do that one then. <laughs> Five okay. things to do in quarantine. Um, read lots and lots of books that have been sitting on your bookshelf for years and years. Um, to uh, discover a new musician that you think you discovered online <laughs> by going through all of the different music <laughs> that's out there. Um, three. Um, Baking something new, that's what I've been doing a lot of. Four, um, making your dogs play with random things around your house to keep them occupied because they're not used to you being home. Five, um, doing lots of stretches. Basic, but I know. <laughs> Good. Good. All right, let's do maybe one or two more because we have so many came up in the uh, here. Um, let's do, uh, you pick one for me, I'll do one. Okay, um, let's see. Do, do, do. I'm gonna pick one. So many great ones. Thank you for your suggestions. <laughs> oh, let's see. Five things that fish think about. That one has several likes, so we'll go with that one. <laughs> Five things that fish think about. Okay. Um, ah, a hook. Uh, a worm. Ah, another fish. Uh, 
Ah, I'm in the air now. Ah, boiling water. <laughs> Fish aren't very smart. That's kind of where I was going with that. Uh, <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, something went wrong with the live feed for Mick. Uh, not sure if, yep, it looks like somebody refreshed it and it worked for them. So Mick, if you want to give that a shot, hopefully I'll sort things out before you. If you hear Tony talking right now, hopefully it means that yeah, it you'll is sorted hear it like admittedly. <laughs> itself out. Okay. Um, do we want to do one more of those? Sure. Yeah, let's yeah. do one more. Let's, let's, let's pick one for Taylor. looks like um, one that's got a few likes from the peanut gallery. Five things you would not share with your kids. This is a PG-13 rated show. I'm just going to preface that really quick. Um, what Santa brought them? Um, what they got for Hanukkah? I shouldn't go with all holidays. Um, um, I shouldn't share with my kids. Um, all of the soda I'm consuming that I'm telling them not to consume. Um, what mommy is really reading. Um, and um, what is in the top drawer of my bedside table? Very yes. nice and done. Uh, props to Taylor for not taking the obvious response of the coronavirus. Uh, oh, I was to share with you. oh, no. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. So, all right. So, that is a fun game that you can play with anyone, and it's super easy. You don't have to be um, with that person to play it. You can easily play this game over the phone. Um, same with the other two games. Electric Company actually would be really fun to hear two people yelling at the end. Um, wonderful. So, now that we are feeling pretty warmed up. Those are kind of um, some basic warm up games to get us kind of thinking and the juices all flowing. We're gonna move now to something a little bit more um, of a technique that you can use. This one is less gamey, um, more of what improvisers do to make sure that they're keeping the content that they're producing interesting. This is what we call A to C thinking. So I'm gonna say one thing and then I'm gonna say what um, that thing makes me think of, and what that thing makes me think of. I'll show you what I mean by that. Tony, do you want to give me a word? Uh, it's pond. Pond. So pond makes me think of koi fish, which makes me think of throwing up. I'm allergic to fish, so not that you would eat a koi fish, but that's what I would think of. This is, again, one thing you'll notice with us, what we're going over is it... <laughs> Um, it's, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by comments. Um, this is something that it, there's no rules to it. It's something that makes sense for you. The audience doesn't have to understand your A to C thinking. Um, so Tony, I'm going to give you. Yes. And yes, the video quality might be a little bit low. I think the internet, uh, especially around the city areas are, is getting really overwhelmed nowadays because a lot of people are staying at home on their Wi-Fi when they wouldn't normally be. So thanks for, for getting through it with us. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm going to give Tony a suggestion, a uh, word to think of, so, or to take those three steps. Tootsie roll. Tootsie rolls make me think of fire. Uh, fire makes me think of uh, injuries. Good. So again, the idea is, I mean, it's a personal thing. There's no wrong answers, just like we said before. Um, and it's really just about taking your first instinct and just taking it a step further. If you want to um, shoot out some comments for things that we can take three steps, I would love to see those. Um, we'll keep playing these ourselves unless we can go back through some of the comments. Is that what you're trying to do? Nope, just checking on my internet. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Uh, Tony, um, do you want to give me one to take three steps? Yeah, uh, watermelon. Watermelon makes me think of summer. Summer makes me think of uh, swimming in the pool. Swimming in the pool makes me think of chlorine. Chlorine makes me think of burning my eyes. Oh, good. Um, I see carpet. Carpet. Carpet makes me think of burns, which make me think like rug burns. I don't need to explain. I don't know why I'm explaining mm -hmm. to him. Um, but which make burns make me think of matches. <laughs> Jedi. Uh, Jedi makes me think of Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks uh, makes me think of the 90s. Nice. Um, we've got grass. Grass makes me think of hula, which makes me think of Hawaii. <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, with all of these, the idea is like, like Taylor said to um, just kind of take your first instinct, whatever it is, follow that spontaneous first thought and then just kind of see where it goes from there. So with our first thought or our A to B, we're just thinking the first thing that comes to our head like we did before. And then we're holding on to that and following it just a step further. So this is kind of how you create scenes, which Taylor's gonna talk about soon. Yeah, so um, before we get into that, now let's talk about how we can do that with locations and people, because that's often what we're going to be working with when we're in an improv show or um, when we're performing in front of an audience or working with improvisers. So um, I'm gonna give Tony a location and he's gonna take um, he's going to take it three steps with three people that he would see in that location. So as opposed to thinking of um, one location and taking it three steps, he's actually going to um, he's going to think about that location and then think of three characters that might appear in that location. So a location for Tony is um, uh, on the streets of Mardi during Mardi Gras. Okay, three people you might see on the streets during Mardi Gras are uh, the parade royalty, um, uh, recently divorced housewife, cutting loose for the first time in 20 years, um, and a uh, lost child. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of those three things, I'm gonna take the most recent one that he said, so the lost child, and I'm gonna say three places now. Now I'm gonna take it to location, so three places where I might find a lost child. Would be finding a lost child? Still be a, uh, okay, um, but you might see a lost child. I'm gonna say um, at the grocery store. I'm going to say at Disneyland. I'm going to say at um, uh, in my uncle's backyard. Okay. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Tony's gonna get my uncle's backyard, and he's gonna have to tell me three characters that you might see in my uncle's backyard. And while I'm doing that, again, if you uh, want to show up in the comments, um, any location or, or person, any character or location you can I was looking for any place or any person, and we'll pick one and we'll come up with either three places we'd find the person or three people that we'd find in the place, either way. So this is, again, how you kind of develop ideas for scenes, which we'll talk about. So, in your uncle's backyard, three other people that I might see are your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, his neighbor's kid trying to get a ball that went over the fence, uh, and uh, an escaped inmate trying to hide from the police. Ooh, okay, wonderful. So it looks like we've got some... Uh, <laughs> in the gutter with a balloon or cold stone. <laughs> oh, in the desert. Okay, let's see. I will do cold stone. So I'm gonna to do three characters in cold stone that I might see, I might see, a uh, child with sticky fingers. Um, I might see an employee um, singing reluctantly. I might see um, my um, my kind neighbor mm -hmm, <laughs> that, that was really feeling like ice cream because the ice cream truck didn't show up when they wanted it to. <sighs> come well, on through. And so I'll stuff. come up with three locations for uh, a man dressed as a zebra. Ooh. So I'll come up with three locations for a man dressed as a zebra. They might be at a mascot convention. Um, they might be um, at a zoo trying to blend in. Uh, or <laughs> they might be um, on a uh, park bench sitting alone waiting for a date uh, who is clearly playing a prank on them. Wonderful. Um... Okay, I will do one last one. So I'm going to, oh, so specific. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, location in a canoe in the middle of the ocean with a can of spam. Okay, call back to my uncle, um, followed by I would see, um, oh my gosh, this is going to be a fish character that really is trying to get the spam um, out of the canoe and um, a mermaid uh, trying to find their love and has, has already a love for spam and so it's, they think they found their soulmate too specific too. <laughs> Wonderful. So that is basic A to C thinking. Um, you can take it a lot of different ways like we just showed you. So just taking words is a fun way to start off with until you get more comfortable. Then you can focus on locations. Then you can focus on people or you can focus on doing like the combination of the two like Tony and I just did. Um, a next, our next 
activity that's more of like a learning activity like we just practiced is scene painting. So this is a great way to start generating ideas for characters and the place really building the environment of your improv world. So Tony and I are just gonna start describing something and this will be your example of scene painting because it's a little bit easier to show you than really talk to you about it. Are you ready? And as you're, you're seeing us do this again, you can send up in the comments for other ideas for us as well. Yeah, and if you if you wanna collectively join in with our scene painting, I think that would be really cool. And you'll see what I mean by this in just a sec. So, um, an old-fashioned fire hydrant that's rusted over. Um, near it, I see a dog that hasn't gotten a lot of food um, and that's running around the fire truck. Um, the fire truck is uh, just sitting there on the side of the road. It doesn't seem to be in service. Uh, next to the fire truck, are um, rusty cans um, labeled with Boston beans and with um, dirty caked spoons. Uh, someone is walking by picking up the cans and putting them in a trash bag. Um, and so I'm going to stop us really yeah. quick. So we're describing an area that we see. We can keep adding details to that to this um, and we can go further and further and further away. So we do, don't have to stay at the fire truck, um, but this is us starting to really develop this scene so that we can build scenes off of this. So if you wanna join the scene, yes, please leave a comment. So um, next to the fire truck is um, a lot of other parking spaces. <laughs> um, but uh, half the parking spaces say that they're reserved, even though it's clear no one's parked there in a while. There are weeds growing in um, right next to the sidewalk, and they've grown like two feet tall. Um, sticking out of the weeds is a page of a magazine um, that clearly uh, has been there for a while. Nearby... Uh, grandmom is He's throwing a trunk <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, so grandma is throwing a trunk at a disobedient child who's running out the front screen door. <laughs> Old fire dog suffering from incontinence. Oh no. Oh gosh. A yes. poor guy in drinking punch. That makes things exciting. Oh, I love that. I love that. So you can yes. see with this exercise, I'm gonna talk through, through it a little bit more. You can see with this exercise, we're building um, potential characters that could be in this. So maybe we actually show what's happening with this porcupine. Maybe this porcupine is having a little party, a little soiree um, <laughs> near this dump. Um, then we have um, <laughs> then we have this old fire dog. And, and what characters can do we think of when we think this place. Um, so maybe like a retired fireman. Um, what else? Yeah, uh, there could be uh, somebody who uh, just got uh, dumped for their drinking problem wandering the streets. A sad boy playing the harmonica. <laughs> um, a parking sergeant who looks like it could be a turtle just for the sake of that pun. Congratulations, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So that was our first evening. Let's go ahead. Um, and we're gonna move on to a new one. Um, so we're gonna do the same exact exercise, but new location, so wipe everything we just created. Um, that world has gone away, so sad, but time to move on. Um, so um, I see a hammock tied between two trees. The trees are palm trees. And continue commenting, we want you to be a part of this. So now we're in a new spot, so you can try to think of what we've, we've been saying and building up to that. There's fresh, fresh sand um, that has been kissed by the sun. Um, in the distance you can hear the faint sound of like pre-recorded like cliche island music coming from like an old speaker. Uh, uh, there is um, a dead fish that has um, wound up on the, the land um, that has a rope tank around it. <laughs> um, uh, a, a employee of somewhere in a pristine, like white hollow cargo shorts, um, has to pick up the fish and put it into a trash can with one of the little grabber claws before any of the anybody around knows it. The hammock is too small, just in general <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> um, the sun said pass, and a bottle washes up on the shore. 
there's a man watching the hammock thinking and jumping in. Oh, these are so good. Yes. Seagulls who ate too much. That only spells disaster for whoever lays in that hammock. Yes. Um, I hear, you can really play with all your five senses with this. I hear um, a rowdy bar getting, um, kicking people out. On the sand is Admiral Seahorse tying up his boats. Just demoted from Captain Eve. Maybe he got demoted for negligence. Eh? Eh? Thank you. Tiny coconuts <laughs> fall like hail from the sky. There are bananas nearby and they are dancing. A giant. A giant has a tiny friend who likes to be slingshot to the ocean. A message in a bottle appears never got to its true destination. Ooh. Very exciting. So there's already from all the su suggestions that you have, there's a lot of different ways that if we were to play this as a, a performed scene, there's a lot of different ways it can go. There's a lot of different characters we could be. There's a lot of different kind of plot points you can pick up on. There's things to focus on. So. Yeah. So um, it's already been 30 yeah. minutes. Um, but to kind of wrap this up, um, let's talk about um, kind of what we just did. We really focused a lot on yeah. um, thinking, yeah. thinking on our feet. We um, we didn't get to the three line scenes because um, what we've been working on is how you get all that information. So we're gonna explain to you really quickly what a three line scene is. Um, and what we've been working with is creating all these different characters, um, creating this world so you have characters to pull from so that you can easily construct a scene between a partner. Um, so what a three line scene looks like is literally what it sounds like. It's three lines, but you want to get as much information out there as possible. I love to start with these exercises that are scene painting so that I already established my world so I have so much to pull from. Um, so if I was to go some of the ideas, Tony, do you want to start us off and kind of demonstrate a three line scene with me? Yeah, absolutely. So if we, we the last thing that we heard, the last thing that we heard, off to the distance, there's a chef making creme brulee. Um, so uh, we could start off a scene um, of a chef making a and say, like, uh, uh, good, good afternoon, miss. Uh, you, you requested the table side service. I, I did, and I, Johnny boy, I was asking for some nice caviar. Uh, absolutely, ma'am. I'll, I'll bring it right over, and, and uh, you just uh, say the word. If you have any other kind of questions, I'll be your major for the evening. Wonderful. So we establish um, three different things. We establish who we were. We established where we were in this fancy restaurant, um, and we established what we were doing. He was serving me. So you wanted, <laughs> um, you want to, in any construction of any scene, when you get into the actual improvised scenes, you always want to get that information out as quickly as possible so that you and your partner have things to be building with. So we established our world of being in a restaurant. And the reason that we we do all these other warm-ups before we even get to like starting off the scenes is because by talking about the things we've been talking about, you're already naturally answering those questions. We already talked about how can we find other characters in the location? How can we find the locations that we could be at? You know, what could be happening in those locations? So you're, we want you to kind of train your brain to naturally be answering those questions before you get into a scene, so that when it is time to perform, you've already got that part figured out. There's no moment of panic of, a, oh, who am I, where am I? Yeah, yeah. well, um, thank you all so much for tuning into this. Um, I'm going to leave the, obviously, the comments still up, so if you have any questions for us, um, please feel free to ask us about any of the things that we did today or even just about us. Um, we were so excited to be here and host this master class. Um, again, going back to who we are, my name's Taylor Machete. I'm the artistic director of Laughing Pig Theater. This is Tony Machete. I'm the executive director of Laughing Pig Theater. Um, so check out our theater page, Laughing Pig Theater. Um, we do lots of different things for teachers and for um, improvisers, performers, you name and it. Stay tuned to the ASU Gamage page. There's going to be more um, teaching artists with uh, classes and, uh, for all ages um, in the future. If you are a teaching artist yourself, there's opportunities for you as well to check out uh, through ASU Gamage as well. Yeah, and the um, teaching artist program um, deadline is coming up. I'm trying to remember what the deadline is. We'll post a link in the comments it should be. as well. Uh, thank you, Captain Seahorse, for your service. Uh, we appreciate that, and we oh, yes, we can absolutely post some more information about these exercises. Oh yes, and this this poster was just kind of a guide to what um, what we were learning. But I will definitely post the exercises in here so that you um, so that you can read them. Thank you all so much. It was such a delight. Thank you, Joe. Uh, this is, aloha.
Uh, I'm sure that was all accurate to what you see every day, Joe, back out there in Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, yes, there is a link now for the TAP program, the Teaching Artist program, um, and we will leave more information about our specific lessons and about Lock and Pig. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your night, and we hope to see you again soon. Yes, good night. Goodbye. Thank you.